Bear with me. So the apostle Paul, apostle Peter writes in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to what? Repentance. The reason why Jesus Christ has not come and he expects us to wait for him patiently is because of your brother or sister who is not born again. You want that person to have the opportunity to receive the gospel. So what are you doing? Who is going to tell him or her? You. Who is going to show him Christ by your life, your lifestyle? Who is going to make the person to be convinced that Muslim friend of you, that Muslim colleague of you, that Muslim student in your class, that person who don't know Christ, God is waiting for such a person to be repent, I mean, to be born again. And God is looking up to you that by your patience and your lifestyle, you will bring him to the knowledge of the salvation of Jesus Christ. Mm. consider Paul's desire for the Colossians in Colossians chapter 1 verse 11 to 12 he prayed that they would be strengthened with all power according to God's glory, glorious might so that they may have great endurance and what patience and, and, and joyfully giving thanks to the father who has qualified them to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of God the NIV qualify them to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of God the kingdom of light so Paul is saying that in waiting for that kingdom in waiting for the coming of the savior endure with patience let nothing discourage you. Because one day, one day, if he will not even come, you will grow old. Hundred and something years, you will die. And when you die, you have a place to go. So wait with patience. Endure, endure, endure everything that comes your way. Hello? Yesterday I was at a funeral and one um, senior minister gave a story about a man who was so much afraid when he was going to farm and he needed to cross the cemetery. And so he was so much afraid. So he stand somewhere and waiting that at least somebody going to farm also will come and then he will join the person to cross the cemetery. And as he was standing there, he saw a man coming. He said, oh, praise God. When the man got there, he said, sir, I've been waiting for someone so that we can cross this cemetery because I'm scared. I'm scared. And the man said, oh, don't worry. When I was alive, I was also scared. Until I died and I realized everybody would die. Number two. Number two. You need patience in dealing with people. You need the fruit of patience in dealing with what? People. Patience is essential in our dealing with people, both Christians and non-Christians. Amen? When you are dealing with people, you need this fruit of the Spirit. Whether they are Christians or not Christians. Because even among the Christians, you will get people who will be stubborn, who will offend you, who will make sure that you will not be happy in the things of God. But with patience, you shall overcome. Uh, I said with patience, you shall overcome. People will disappoint and fail us. They will wrong us and be slow to change. The people you will try and pray concerning their life, you give them the word of God so that they can change, they can be transformed by the word of God. Sometimes they will be slow in their changing. And you need to exercise this fruit of the spirit because they will change. But it takes time. It takes time. Just as some of us, it took a long time until God pushed it at a corner and realized that we have no, nothing to lose anymore. So we will go to Jesus Christ. And we followed Pastor Richard to church. Other than that, what is church? A 
after all, I sing in the church. And so why this church, church? I'm already, I'm already in the church singing. So you meet certain people as you proclaim the gospel to them, it will take a long time. They are slow in changing. And with patience, you will be able to deal with them. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, pastor is talking to you. And then ask her, neighbor, are they sinking in? Uh, it must sink in all. Amen. Are you here with me? But, G, but just as God is long-suffering with us, we must be patient with others. No believer can afford to ignore this fruit of the Spirit if he or she wants to become a servant of God. Breaking news. If you want to be a servant or may servant of God, you cannot ignore the fruit of patience of the Spirit. No matter whom you are dealing with. If you don't exercise this fruit, there's no way you can be a servant of God. Paul had no patience dealing with believers. He would take authority and permission to go and destroy them. That they will be arrested and they will be slaughtered, they will be killed. But when he came to an encounter with the Lord and the Holy Spirit, the same person said that when I meet the poor, I tend to be a poor person so that I can win them. When I meet the rich, I lift up myself to be a rich. When I meet the Gentiles, I become a Gentile. When I meet the Jews, I become a Jew in order to win them. He was so much patient that even when they stoned him, he still preached to the same people. You need patience when you are dealing with people. Other than that, you cannot be a servant of God. You will fail. Number three, you need patience in the promises of God. Amen? Amen. The word of God is full of God's promises. But they just don't come anyhow. You need patience to wait until the right time before God will release it to you. Amen. Oh. Praying one day, two days will not release the promises of God. Doing certain things will not just release the promises of God. The promises of God comes according to God's timing. Oh, this one, nobody said amen to that. God's promises will not come according to your timing. Oh. It comes according to whose timing? The owner's timing. And so, in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, he says that we do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been what? Promised. Amen? Amen. We don't want you to be sitting there idle because God has said, I will feed you. Do not think about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take about himself. So you are not doing anything. You are lazy. The promises of God is there. Work hard and wait for it. Yeah. If somebody understands the point I'm making, yeah. we have lazy Christians. All that they do is to pray and pray and pray. They don't want to work. They'll be sitting at prayer meetings. They'll be sitting at uh, prayer camps. They'll be going to mountains and pray and pray. That manna will continue to fall. Breaking news, manna stopped immediately. The children of God entered where? The promised land. So if you want manna to flow for you again, you will die in hunger and in poverty. So the writer of Hebrews is telling us that don't be lazy. But in working hard, hard, be patient to inherit what the Father has promised. I prophesy over your life with the fruit of patience. Every promise concerning your life, you shall receive it in Jesus' name. Every promise at the right time, you shall receive it in Jesus' name. You will never miss any promises concerning your life. You will never. 
you will never. Romans chapter 4, verse 19 to 21. Romans 4, 19 to 21. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. 21. And being fully convinced that what he has promised he was able to what? He's talking about Abraham. Though he was weak in body, the wife was dead in production. But because of patience, the fruit of the spirit and faith, he was able to wait till the promise of God concerning his life came to him when he was 100 years and the wife was 90 years. He did not weaver on it. He did not stagger on it. He did not fail believing it. And do not fail waiting to the right time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let us wait for the right time. Is it your documents? The right time. Is it your marriage? The right time. Is it the seed of the womb? The right time. Is it your job? The right time. The promotion? The right time. You need the fruit of waiting. Patience. Patience. And the Lord will release it to you. We need the fruit of patience, number four, because patience is wisdom. Did I say something here? I said, patience is what? Wisdom. Proverbs chapter 11, verse, uh, chapter 19, 11. Proverbs 19, 11. Says, A person's wisdom yields patience. Mm. A person's wisdom yields what? What? Uh, uh, New King James. Do you have NIV? <laughs> Did he quote the right scripture? Proverbs 19, 11. Huh? It says, a person's wisdom yields what? Patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. This is NLT, but you follow me. It's a person's wisdom, the one who says that he has wisdom, patience, the fruit of patience come out of him or her. Is somebody here with me? If you claim you have wisdom, we're not talking about book wisdom. Even book doesn't give wisdom, it gives knowledge. But if you claim you have the wisdom of God, that wisdom of God produces the fruit of patience. Amen? You will wait until God's time for God to do whatever he wants to do. You will not fight on your own. Hello? We're talking about bearing the fruit of patience. Church, these are the integrity God is looking for in the life of his children. You can pray all the prayers on this earth. To every miracle on this earth. If these fruits is not seen in your life, Lala. Let's finish because of time. Today, I'm not going to do much explanation. I just want to flow with it. Number five. Patience is a tool for change. A tool for change. The fruit of patience, which is the spirit fruit, is also a tool for what? Change. Proverbs 25, 15. Through patience, a ruler can be persuaded and a gentle tongue can break what? Boom. Through patience. You want to change somebody, you want to change your wife, you want to change your husband, you need patience. You you want to change a friend, you need patience. You want to change somebody, you need patience. It is only through patience that you can persuade somebody to be changed. Hmm? Are you here with me? Things are not going well. Pastor, my wife. Pastor, my husband. Listen, what you need is patience with the person. 
Because the Bible says that with patience, a king can be what? Persuaded. And the writer is not talking about ordinary king. You know those days when a king decreed, that is final. Probably these days you can even uh, apologize to Asante Hine. I was going to use him as an example. And then he will forgive you. But in those days, if a king makes a decree and put his signet, his ring on it, kum, nobody can change it. If it is about death, you are going to die, finish. But the Bible is saying that with patience, you can persuade that king to change his heart and mind. Oh, somebody didn't get what I'm talking about. So, lady, woman, listen to me. With patience, you can persuade your husband to change. A man and you so army because I'm on pay. I'm on pay. But the yummy, I'm some fun. Yenibi. If you do, if you do me, I will do her, I will do him. No, 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 no. That is not the attitude of a Christian woman. That is not the attitude of a Christian man. Men with patience, we can persuade our wife to be transformed in the things of God. Is somebody here with me? Yeah. With patience, you can even persuade your enemies to change. Yeah. Be patient with them. Yeah. Give them more time and continue to pray. Yeah. One day. Thank you for accepting the message. Brethren, it is time for us to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Is somebody here with me? Yeah. Let me finish. Number six, last but one. Patience, patience is a sign of maturity. Patience is what? For you to know that somebody is matured. I'm not talking about maturity in age. I'm not talking about maturity in how many years the person has been in church. I'm not talking about maturity because the person is well educated. I'm not talking about maturity because the person is, is so much professional and his or her profession is growing and doing well for him or her. No, I'm talking about maturity in character and in attitude. Hello? Are you here with me? Very, very important. And for you to measure somebody's maturity in character and attitude, patience is one of it. Exercise patience. Let the fruit of patience, the fruit of the spirit patient, work in you no matter what is going on. We need this in the church more than anything. We need it in our life more than anything. If we claim we love God, then God expects us to bear this fruit. Patient. Other than that, there is a question mark about your love for God. You cannot love God and and, and be so much in anger and bitterness. You know, just a little thing you want to destroy. You want to fight. You want to say something. You will curse. You will do all sort of things. I wonder what kind of God's love is that? Because God's love, which God loves us, even in our sin, the prodigal son. The Bible says every day the father will go and look outside if my son is coming back. But he has taken all his inheritance, all his blessings. He went and messed it up. And still, the father was looking up. This is the love I'm talking about. And the father with patience kept looking every blessed day that one day I will see my son coming back. And lo and behold, one day this is the love that comes out of patience, the fruit patience. 
And that is what God expects every one of us to do. You know, Paul made a statement in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 24. Ephesians 6 24. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. He says that grace, that is God's undeserved favor, be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with undying and incorruptible love. Mm. Paul, the writer, is talking about grace here. And he said that grace, which is the, the, the undeserved favor of God, must be with who, those who love God, the Lord Jesus, with undying and incorruptible what? Love. Let me read from the English Standard Version. He said, grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love uncorruptible. From the voice Bible, the voice translation. May his grace surround all who love our Lord Jesus, the anointed with a never-ending love. Let me read another translation from the New King James. He said, Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. And the last one, another translation, the Living Bible. The Living Bible, I love the way he said, May God's grace and blessing be upon all who sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ. What kind of love do you have for Jesus? Have you seen why the grace of God is not manifesting itself in us? What kind of love do you have for Jesus? What kind of love? Is it a sincere love? Uncorruptible love? Is it a love that is sacrifice, sacrificial love? No matter what happens to you, no matter what anyone says, it is about Jesus Christ and you'll be patient with the person. Hello? I have come to understand that, church, it takes personal revelation to love Jesus. Can I repeat that for free? It takes personal revelation of Jesus to love him. Not about what somebody says. Not about what Pastor Mark preaches. Not about what anyone tells you. But your personal encounter with Jesus. The way Jesus revealed himself is the way you will love him. And so, most of the times, because we don't have, we, we have never had a personal encounter with Jesus, and we just come to church, just pray, just dance, just sing, go and come, there's no love. We have become lukewarm Christians. We are neither hot or cold. Pastors, deacons, everybody. Lukewarm. You remember Jesus Christ one day in Matthew chapter 16. As he was talking to the disciples, he asked them, who do people say I am? And then he became, some of them said, they said oh, they said you are uh, uh, um, Elisha. Some of, them said, some of them said you are the John the Baptist who has come back. And they mentioned on and then he said, okay, who do you say I am? What is your personal revelation about me? What have you seen concerning me? And then Peter lifted his voice and said, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus said, Peter, it is not flesh and blood that has revealed to you revelation. What is your revelation about Jesus? Because we don't have any revelation about him. No personal encounter with him. We live our life anyhow as Christians. And then we claim we are Christians. I walk under grace. Grace comes to those who sincerely sincerely, uncorruptibly love Jesus with everything in them. And Jesus said, the law is summarized into, into two. 
love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your strength, and all your spirit. And love your neighbor as yourself. I pray that you will love the Lord Jesus with everything in you so that you shall experience the grace of God upon your life every day. I pray that you will turn from any lukewarm because Jesus in Revelation chapter 3 verse 16 to 15 to 16 listen to what Jesus said. Listen to what Jesus said. Revelation chapter 3, verse 16, 15 to 16. As he was blessing the churches and talk, talking about them and telling them what he had seen, he got to the church of the Lodicians. And then Jesus, where is the scripture? Put it there and let's go, please. Revelation 3, 15 and 16. He said, I know your works, that you, you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. You are none of them. 16. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. In other words, that day you will stand there and tell me, Lord, I did this and did that for you and I will tell you, I don't know you. Vomit you out of my mouth. Church, it's not about dressing to church. It's not about how you can blow your mouth. It's not how you can show off. It is about your personal encounter with Jesus and how much you love him. May the Lord bless his word this afternoon. And may the Lord increase his knowledge in our spirit and in mind. May his word transform us. Can you stand with me at this time, please? Stand with me.